Let's bring in the former New South Wales Liberal Party leader, Kerry Chikorovsky. Um, a real moment in the history of the Liberal Party, uh, isn't it, Kerry? Oh, it's devastating, Peter. I mean, it's, you know, I worked in the Wentworth electorate on Saturday, spent most of the day there, and it was quite telling that the number of people who were saying to me things like, look, you know, we really like Dave Sharma, he's done a really good job locally, but, you know, you guys haven't addressed the questions of um, climate change and integrity. It wasn't all about the Prime Minister, I might add. It was more broadly that the party, to, you know, reflecting some of what your report has just said, more broadly that the party wasn't taking those issues seriously enough for people in those electorates. And so, you know, I, I had a pretty bad feeling, I must say, by Saturday afternoon. I knew Dave was in trouble, but um, I didn't realise it was going to be as strong as it was and across as many seats as it was. And according to w when it comes to... Uh, primary votes, Labor's uh, went down from the last election as well. So that's an indication that not even they have done enough. So what can we expect moving well, forward yet, here? Well, the, the, real, the real strength of this election, if you like, has been the rise of the Greens. Yeah. If you look at a number of the seats that the Labor Party have actually won, they've won them on the back of Green preferences. Um, if those green preferences weren't as strong, or indeed if the uh, the right wing parties had been stronger, we might have seen some different results. I think the collapse of Clive Palmer and One Nation is quite an intriguing part of this election as well. So I think when we go back and we start to analyse it, we'll realise that there has been a very strong mood within the community about issues such as climate change. Mm. It's been there for a long time, but I think the problem has been that the the differences between the parties have been so confusing that people haven't really been able to park a vote. This time they were very clearly able to park their vote. They decided that their vote would go to the people who were just talking about those two issues. The Creens and the Teals constantly spoke about climate change and integrity. And that was a very simple message which resonated with a lot of people. It will be interesting to see what happens in the Parliament, though, about the delivering on those two issues. I mean, it's a, it's a good thing to be talking about them. It's, a, you know, it's an easy thing mm. in many ways to talk about it. But negotiating the, the actual implementation of those two policies with the Labor government will be a very intriguing prospect for okay. people like me to be watching over the next little while. Yeah. Uh, who do you think should lead the Liberal Party? Oh, well, you, I knew you were going to ask me that. I was listening to your interview with Susan Lay. Um, at the moment, I understand there's only one contender. So, mm. I mean, if Peter is the only person who puts up his hand... And let me say, as someone who's had to lead a party after a devastating loss, it's not easy, particularly, I think, going from government into opposition. In government, you've had all the resources, you've had all the support. You go into opposition and suddenly none of that's around. Mm. So leading an opposition from government, I think, is particularly difficult. Um, I don't think it's a job too many people would want. So, you know, good luck to Peter if he's mm. putting his hand up because D it's going to be a tough three years. Given the, the woman problem, the women problem that many people have identified within the Liberal Party, does a female have to be part of the leadership mix now, whether it is the leader or whether it's deputy leader? Does, it, does there have to be a female there? Well, I don't want to jinx Susan's chances, but I've known Susan Lay for, from the time she got elected into Parliament. And I have always regarded her as an outstanding individual, but also an outstanding Liberal and a very good local member and an even better minister. So um, I, would not be, uh, I would not be concerned if Susan decided that she wanted to put her hand up for deputy. In fact, I would very much endorse that. OK, uh, so where does the, the Liberal Party go here? It, it, as we know, the moderate vote got absolutely decimated. So does it try and, and pick those moderates back up again or does it go further to the right and become more conservative and, and lock them in? Well, the Liberal Party is most successful when it's a centre-right party. If you look at the leadership of people like John Howard and the policies that they implemented, they were neither really hard right or, near, or hard left. They were centre-right you know, policies, and I think that's what the Liberal Party needs to go back and have a good look at. Where does it actually sit within the um, Australian community? And, you know, the Liberal Party has always been the party of aspiration. It's been the party of, you know, working for those who want to work for themselves. It's always been the party of opportunity. And it's those sorts of policies and those sorts of stances which actually make it popular within the broader community. Mm. There will be a lot of soul-searching after this result. There'll be a lot of looking at the policies. They'll be looking at style. Absolutely, leadership styles will come into it, I'm sure. But I think if they go back to their roots, if they look at the things which have always made them popular, basically since Menzies, 
then they will actually refine, they'll find their soul again and they'll be able to take that soul and those that direction forward and regain the trust of the Australian community. Mm. Okay, Kerry Chikorovsky, good to see you as always. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon.